Good morning. Morning, Kenny. All right. Good morning. Let's get a close up on that. All right. All right. Hey, how you going? Good to see you. Good to see you.
Michelle Leonhardt as early as last week issued another statement of intimidation, of promising raids, of promising attacks upon a disabled community. This is not fair, this is not justice, and we are not going to stand for it. We are not going to retreat. We are not going to surrender. We are going to stand strong together. When we are looking at people like Scott Fell, we are looking at people like Van being incarcerated, taking up resources, needed federal resources, when there are violent organized crime in these states. Why would we spend money on peaceful disabled people providing medicine for each other? That's a crime. That is unacceptable. That is our government acting in an inappropriate, unjust way. And by the Constitution, that is crime eight. to be a true patriot and stand up for what's right. And I am so lucky because in San Francisco, the patient advocacy movement continues <coughs> to grow in leaps and bounds and bring about new patient organizations, one of which is Black and Brown Just Cannabis Policy. And I'm extremely proud to stand tall with Mr. Gregory Ledbetter. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters in the fight. I stand in arm in arm with, with my uh, co person Shona Kukanawa and let you know as we speak, people are being raided out there at medical cannabis or cannabis as a whole. We won't even put medical on it right now. Cannabis gardens are getting raided. Thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars are being spent to turn around and put people in jail that could, they could be best spent chasing other drug traffickers and racketeers. Me, uh, medical cannabis is a medicine that all of us need. All, if not need, would like to use in their daily life. The money that is spent for outrageous raids, incarceration of uh, what's, by the way, uh, incarceration of people of color mostly, and low in income, uh, low and no income patients mostly. Exactly. Are, is a waste of our government time and money. Those finances should be spent on other things so far as major drug trafficking, uh, there's uh, uh, legislation being put out right now to, de uh, to bring the medical can uh, cannabis uh, down one level on the charts. I say let's eliminate it all together. Yeah. We don't need to be on no chart. It's a medicine, you guys. It's a medicine. It's not a drug. And with that, I have a person that is a good friend of mine, a very outspoken patient advocate. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to uh, introduce you to Marquise Osbury. Yeah. Yeah. Marquise! Yeah. Good morning, everybody, or good afternoon. Uh, medical cannabis in my life has helped me dramatically. I am a, a low-income disabled patient suffering from chronic illnesses of all sorts. Uh, I suffer from addictions, I suffer from a lot of things. Medical cannabis seems to be my source of relief and, and what keeps my life going. It, it puts that extra spark in my life. It, it, it allows me to get out of bed, it allows me to wake up in the morning and, and feel good about myself. It gives me that self-esteem and stuff. Uh, the federal government is not standing by its word when it says that it protects medical cannabis patients, distributors, uh, cultivators, patients, caregivers. It, it says one thing but does another. The, the DEA just got funding to raid a whole bunch of clubs and dispensaries where people go to get their safe access and to use their medicine safely. Um, I stand with everybody here in saying that it's not right and it's not right. fair yeah. that we stand up and ask the federal government to allow us the privilege and the right to use our medicine for our own health and they want to turn their backs and say no.
you can't do it. And if you do, we will lock you up or throw you in jail or make you pay six million dollars so your family can go free. It's not right. It's not fair. And I will stand with everyone here and continue to protest and advocate for low-income, disabled patients' rights. Thank you. Right. We're mad as hell and we're not going to take it anymore! The point is right! Right, so what glad, do we want? I'm so glad to have young youth patient advocates like Marquise coming out and speaking with us. It's critical that we have youth and elders with us. We are facing having once again to stand in front of the doors of medical cannabis dispensaries and not allow the feds entry. To say no way, not in this state. We want the feds out of California. Californians know how to take care of each other. We know how to provide for each other. We know what our state laws are. And if you are a member of a collective or a cooperative, I want to tell you we are here today because the federal government received their funding this morning at 5 a.m. They received a large bulk of funding to attack our community once again. The acting director, Michelle Lionheart, is responsible for hundreds of raids in our state. It was irresponsible of every state senator from a medical cannabis state to even allow the acting director of the DEA to become the director of the DEA. She has shown malice not only towards medical cannabis patients, but also to our elders in hospice. And now she has received a bulk of funds. We've had three letters issued. We've had one from the coal. We've had one from <coughs> Michelle Lionheart. We are looking at having to stand up for our rights and having to announce that we are not only a consumer oriented community. We are a healing community and we are a community of warriors that is not going to allow the feds entrance into our state of compassion. Am I schizophrenia or schizoaffective disorder. We're very misunderstood. Change is not good for us. 
I mean, the police, I haven't gotten arrested by the police, put on the 5150 unit, you know, or, or had to go to a hospital because I couldn't hold my food down or I was just psychologically unbalanced since I started using cannabis. As a paranoid, a high-functioning paranoid schizophrenic, I work with the strictly helpless and hopeless, the ones that seem to never really get it. And a lot of us do have these mental health disorders. Change is not a good thing for us. Um, but change is what we need. I'm often reminded what my grandfather used to say, that politicians are a dirty diapers. They and should devils. change frequently and, and change yeah. usually for the same reasons. <laughs> uh, so, they're like red you. devils. So, you yeah. didn't let that out, too. Thank you. That's correct. You know, and I just say, you know, um, I'm not shooting heroin anymore. I'm not doing the speed. I'm not, you know, having the police having to shoot me down with beanbag guns and tote me off to the nearest 5150 unit because I've been up too many days, you know? I mean, I'm a sick and dying individual that is using a safe alternative, you know? It's kept me off a little bit pain for 17 years. And with that, remember, if we lead, the leaders will have to follow.
law. I have used cannabis for over 40 years, so long before it became legal. It obviously has not made me, you know, so uh, dependent on it that I need something else. I have never done heroin. I have never done meth. I have never done crack. Yeah. So this yeah. argument, this argument from the DEA that if you smoke a joint today, then tomorrow you're going to be a heroin addict, is a bald-faced lie. Yeah. It is my body. It does not belong to the church. It does not belong to the state. They have no right to tell me what I can put in it. They have no right to tell me what I can take out of it. And they have no right to tell me who I can share it with. Yeah! Francisco City Hall, please do. This is an historic day and a, and a time that we can go in and sit and listen to the veterans of our community express what they need as veterans to access their medicine safely in San Francisco, which will go into the Medical Cannabis Task Force annual report to our board of supervisors. San Francisco is a different creature than Oakland. It's a different creature than Berkeley. We started a medical cannabis task force with an array of different stakeholders coming to the table. We do not just have well-heeled industry folks making the decisions. We have disabled low-income patients, low-income cultivators represented. Oh, yeah. And it took the patient movement four years to find a supervisor willing to do that. So let's give a big round of applause for Supervisor Campos. Yeah. as a great civil rights leader and always when he comes to speak with us reminds us that we are a civil rights movement first and foremost and um, he is also going to be helping initiate what is going to be called CCFs. We have MCDs in San Francisco. These are retail locations where patients can get their doctor provided medicine, doctor recommended medicine and collect them and cooperatively. The CCF will be a facility for patients who cannot afford their medicine and who need peer services. And there's only one person I know in San Francisco that would be so bold as to stand up with us on that, and that is Supervisor Campos. Yeah. Yeah. We need the leaders, our leaders in this building in particular, to speak to the leaders in that building over there. Yeah. We're hoping we're creating a bridge today from this building to that building yeah. to say that we are not going to retreat, we are not going to surrender, we are not going to go back. The scope has changed, absolutely. We have many more patients today than we did 10 years ago when we initiated Prop 215. And those state senators have a responsibility to their constituents to protect our health and safety. And we will, when we are not looking at this as a public health issue and looking at it as, it as a criminal issue, we are creating criminals. And that is what I am scared they received funding this morning to do. Mm. At 5 o'clock this morning, the DEA received their funding for race, and that's why we are here today. That's what makes today significant to patient advocates. I encourage every patient advocate here at some point this week to go ahead and get a race training. If you are a member of a cooperative that doesn't know that the DEA received funding today, speak to them. Ask to speak to the community liaison of that cooperative. Every San Francisco cooperative has a community liaison. Have that person go to the various different organizations that provide great training. And I'm going to say another controversial thing. I'm going to say don't pay for it. <laughs> to make a business out of it.
Thank you. We yeah. want it to be open source, just like Wikipedia. I want to be able to go on to Wikipedia tomorrow morning and see that patient advocates have put up the best rate program possible, that it's open source, that if you go to any collective anywhere in any medical cannabis state, you can know the most effective way to protect the patients, the medicine, and block the darn door from the bullies. I yeah. mean, the bullies. What are you doing? Jack booty they go in and arrest a bank executive. They wait till 5 o'clock when the bank is closing. They let the people out and they go back and they get the bank executive. When our collectives are raided, we've had guns pointed in the face of seriously disabled people. And we've had panic attacks near heart attacks. And this type of assault on sick and dying people will not, absolutely will not be tolerated. We will not let them through the doors. We will tell them that we are standing up and they are standing down. Two, four, six, writing a drug protest song. What was the drug?
have been speaking out at every medical cannabis task force saying, don't you dare not create a seed for us. Uh -huh. And they have already spoken the strongest to our federal government and initiated a, a scientific study of the effects of cannabinoids in post-traumatic stress syndrome. And we have to demand science over politics. Yes, there's still people who think the world is flat. And yes, there's still <laughs> DEA agents who think medical cannabis has no medical use. Well. And we've got to change that. And we've got to make that sound as ridiculous as our planet is flat. Right? Right! Yes, we can, oh. cannabis! Rem remind him, yes, we can, <laughs> cannabis! <laughs> so, folks, we're heading to City Hall. Anybody's welcome to join us. spend all this money on it and, and they could that's a good tax cut they, if they want to make cuts that's a good cut they can make right there that's the wrong drugs you know they don't have to fight that they're spending a heck of a lot of money on it and you know i've walked by people uh trying to sell me pot gang members trying to sell me pot and uh it's cutting down on money for gangs yeah it's going to legitimate dispensaries rather than uh sending people back out to the streets and doing it illegally yeah. where they can be left vulnerable, ripped off, and, and contribute to organized crime as yeah. well. That's where people get shot all the time. You hear these people getting shot? These people going out getting those drugs at night. Or cannabis. Or cannabis.